Well, howdy there, Internet students. This is Mr. Hermanson again. Uh, today we're going to start Chapter 4, Unit 4, on exponents uh, and exponential variation. And basically, um, exponents on exponential relationships change by multiplying. So, um, so you might want to write that down. So whenever you hear the word exponent, you should think about multiplying. Uh, anyway, so um, this first example is an example of an exponential situation. Um, so there were 10 emails sent in the first hour. Um, and um, you guys probably know that you can, if you're not careful with opening emails of people that you know or that you recognize in your organization, whatever, um, it's possible for the, uh, those emails to carry a virus. So um, let's say a person um, was not very careful and they sent away these 10 emails to friends because they thought it was really a cool thing. Um, and then each person forwarded that email to 10 people the second hour. So we're talking about here. Um, so think about how many there would be the second hour, the third hour, the fourth hour, the fifth hour, the sixth hour, if this continued to happen. Go ahead and pause and fill in that table and uh, we'll see if you get it right. Well, you should have noticed that if all 10 people email it to 10 people each, that would be 10 times 10 or 100 emails sent the second hour. And then you multiply that by 10 for the third hour and so on. So um, this is an exponential situation. And the thing that we're multiplying by each time is 10. Now, when you see that, um, you should know from past experience that there should be some way you can use the base of 10 and an exponent, because the exponent keeps track of how many times you're multiplying by 10 to represent this. So it turns out that 10 to the 6th gives you 1 million this answer. So, um, so actually, if you wanted to write the equation for this, and we're going to do this more later, um, if you take to get the output, which is how many emails, why, you would just take 10 to however many hours, which we'll use as x, the input, um, to get the number. Okay, and that's because we're continually multiplying by 10. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to just skip this question. If you want to do that, go ahead. Um, but uh, we're going to start by just uh, going over some vocabulary, making sure 100% making sure that you understand what exponents do. Okay, The little number, that's called the exponent. Some people call it a power, but let's just call it an exponent for now. The big number is called the base. Okay. And the exponent, or the power, tells us how many times the base is multiplied together. I like to say how many factors of the base, because a factor is part of a multiplication. So an example would be 3 to the 5th power means there are 5 factors of 3. So it looks like this in... Uh, expanded form. We call that expanded form. And you should kind of get used to expanded form because in uh, algebra when you're dealing with variables knowing the expanded form really helps you understand that. Um, and uh, then we also have standard form which is like the normal number. Now to get the normal number I'm going to show you two ways to do that on your calculator. Uh, and you should know both ways because sometimes one way will make more sense than the other. So one way would be um, to just start multiplying by 3. So I'm just going to put a 1 in. You always want to start with 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Press Enter. And then times 3. Okay, so that's 3 to the first because I multiplied by 3 once. And then once you set it up like this, you can just keep hitting Enter as many times as you need. And in this case, I needed 5, so 
that would be 243. Now the quick way to do it on your calculator is just do 3 and then the caret sign, it's in red right now, to the fifth power, and then enter. Okay. Now one thing about the way this calculator works, notice how um, I'm up on the power right now. If you want to multiply or do some more of an expression with that in it, you have to press the right arrow to get down out of there. All right. So this equals 243. All right. So um, let's practice this. Um, go ahead and write these in expanded form and, um, and then evaluate that. Find the uh, standard form. So I'll, let me write that here. This is standard form. So I made a table so you could do that expanded form. You can just go ahead and write that there and evaluate it so that you're going to take your calculator and do 7 to the fourth power. And that's 2,401. All right, so go ahead and do the first three problems there. Now, if you tried to do x, which is right here, and you tried to raise that to the uh, ninth power, like it says on your calculator, um, your calculator thinks x is whatever you told it x to be. And now, if you don't tell it anything, x will always be 0. That's the default. So you're going to get x to the ninth. Um, right now, my x has a value of 10, so that's why mine says 10,000. But if you reset your memory, then um, then your calculator will store, and here's a store button. You could actually use this too to change the value of x if you want. I just made x equal to 0. Now if I do x to the ninth power, I will get 0 because x value is 0. So it can add a lot of difference. So don't try and use your calculator to, to evaluate x to any power. Um, for that problem, we're just going to say x to the ninth because we don't know what x is at this point. All right. So in exponential form, we can evaluate these two. So let's cross those out. I'll do the first one for you. So in exponential form, you want to count how many factors of m there are. And I notice there's two of those. And then you want to count how many factors of n there are. And I notice there's four of those. So I'm going to just write, in algebra, we don't put any symbols in between them usually. Um, this means m times m times n times n times n times n. Go ahead and do the next one. There's the expression you should have got. Um, you might have the y to the third coming first in this. Um, it's just sort of standard form to put the letters in alphabetical order when you're using letters. All right, so um, what we're going to figure out now is um, what do you think, um, what if the exponent is a negative number? What's up with that? Now, I know last year you never did any negative power exponents, but you should have the mathematical ability to figure that out. Um, actually, I'm going to start way on the end here and do 3 to the 4th. So um, you guys do that right now. Fill in, um, well, you know anything to the 0 power is 1, right? So go ahead and fill that one. You can fill that one in. Um, and you could just keep multiplying by 3 if you wanted to fill in the rest of them. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. Now we're going to go backwards. Okay. Now going backwards, I would divide the number by 3. Right? So 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now the next number is going to be 1 divided by 3. So um, now some of you probably thought that this would be negative 3, which would make sense if we were adding and subtracting. But since we're multiplying and dividing, we actually get 1 divided by 3. Now, I'm going to want you to leave these answers as fractions. So on your calculator, I'm going to let you do the rest of them. So put one in your calculator. 
and then put divided by 3 and then press math fraction um, and so that it always leaves your answer as a fraction so now you'll see one third go ahead and finish those up find the rest of them all right um, you should notice something interesting here something that can really help us deal with negative exponents if you look at this and I'm sure you might have noticed this and you look at this you will notice that the denominator is the same as 3 to the 4 so um, and that happens with all of these check it out the denominator here is 3 to the second so um, what this really helps us figure out negative exponents we know that when we write it as a fraction the denominator will be the same as the number with a positive exponent um, so let's say I didn't know what I, let's say I wanted to know what 3 to the negative 6th was. Now I could continue and follow the pattern. Um, but I did know what 3 to the 6th is. That 3 to the 6th is equal to... seven twenty nine. Now you're going to want to know how to do this because your calculator is limited in its fraction power. So, um, so 3 to the 6th is 729. That means 3 to the negative 6 is equal to 1 over 729. And, um, and if the fraction thing is confusing to you, remember that as you're going backwards, you're dividing. And the more you divide by a base, the smaller it gets if the base is greater than 1. Okay, so um, I want to check something else out here. So make a table like this. Um, I want to see what happens when we have a fraction and we raise it to a, um, a negative power. So 2 thirds to the negative first, 2 thirds to the negative second. And we're going to use our calculator again to help us do this. 2 thirds to the negative third. and so on and what I want you to do is once we get these and you notice what's happening maybe you can watch that pattern and be able to do these negative powers over here without even putting them on your calculator but um, so so anything to the zero power is one anything to the first power is the number itself so that would be two-thirds and then on your calculator, you're going to do this. Um, actually, we'll make it, we'll set it up like we did the last one. We'll put in a 1 to start. So that's 2 thirds to the 0 power. And we're going to multiply that by 2 thirds using the divide sign. And I'm going to change it to a fraction because I want to see the fraction. So I'm going to do number 1 there. And if I hit enter, so there's. 2 thirds to the first is 2 thirds. 2 thirds to the second is 4 ninths. Two thirds to the third, I'll press enter again, is 8 twenty sevenths. Uh, and so on. The next one, uh, I see a pattern here that numerators are going up by two each time. So this will be 16, and the denominator is getting multiplied by 3. Okay, so 2 thirds to the negative first. Now let's check out and see what the calculator says for that. Uh, 2 thirds. Now, if I go backwards, one thing I could do is divide. Um, but just so you can actually see the values, we'll put them in like this with parentheses, 2 thirds. And then we'll use the power button. And we want negative first power. And then we want to change that to a fraction. Notice that's 3 over 2. And 2 thirds to the positive first power was 2 over 3. Let's see if that continues. I'm going to do, if you do second enter, you get last operation you did back again um, so I did that twice 
and I'm going to change this to negative second power now. And then change that to a fraction. And 9 over 4. Now check it out, you guys. This is 4 over 9. This is 9 over 4. So a positive second power is 4 over 9. A negative second power is 9 over 4. Um, that is that will always happen. So we could look at 2 thirds to the third, which is 8 over 27. Flip it for the negative third power, 27 over 8. And I bet you can guess what this one is. If you guessed 81 over 16, you guessed right. Okay. So um, this is kind of reviewing that, but um, I'm going to, I don't want you to be confused by all this. Basically, here's what you're going to do for um, a negative power. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you two examples. I'll do this example and one more, and then we'll try some practice problems. So let's say I have 5 to the negative third power. Well, we saw that that would be the, the negative third power would be the same as 1 over the positive third power. So that's the way we're going to calculate that. We're going to just say 1 over 5 to the third. Which, if you want to do this without a calculator, you would do 5 times 5 times 5, which is 1 over 125. So if you know what 5 to the third is, it's 125, then you know what 5 to the negative third is. It's 1 over 125. Now when you have a fraction to a negative power, what you're going to think about is what was happening here. That when we had the positive 4 power, um, the negative 4 power is just that number flip, the reciprocal of that. So what I'm going to do is just say, all right, I'm just going to do, uh, instead of 3 over 7, let me erase that, I am just going to do 7 over 3 and do that to a positive second power. Now I can just expand it and either do it by hand or use my calculator, whatever. Um, so that's 49 over 9. All right. So use those two ideas to find the answers to these 10 problems. Uh, I'll do two more with you, and then I'll let you finish them up. So um, 6 to the negative 4th, um, what we're going to think about is flipping that, that that's going to be the same as 1 over 6 to the positive 4th power. So on my calculator, if I want, um, I, if I can do this in my head, I would, but... I can't, so I'm just going to do 6 to the 4th. That's 1,296. So that tells me that 6 to the negative 4th is 1 over 1,296. Now let's do a fraction problem like this one. Um, we saw that this would be the positive power flipped. So what I'm going to do is just flip that fraction, make it 7 over 2, make it a positive power. And I can just do 7 over 2 times 7 over 2, which equals 49 over 4. All right. Now, um, when we're doing negative exponents, we're going to always want to write those as common fractions, which means you have a numerator and a denominator. Um, go ahead and try the rest of them. Some of them you will be able to do on your calculator, but some you won't. Um, you can try that and just see what happens. All right. And then you can check back and see which ones you got right. All right, there's your answers. Check that out. See which ones you got wrong if you have questions about how to do them. Um, I'll cover some of that in the meeting today. I also will. Um, if you just message me, I can help you with that too. All right, um, uh, in the homework assignment, you're going to just do the first four, one through four here. Uh, the other ones I'm going to save for another assignment. So do those and then submit your answers on that Google form and uh, we'll talk to you soon.